This video is part of a project for Civ 420 Construction Engineering at the University of Toronto. Hi, my name is Amy Chetillion and I've acted as project coordinator. To begin the project, it was first imperative to understand the scope of work that needed to be completed. This begins with site mobilization, then grading the site to the proposed elevations that were provided by the consultant, then installation of the water main pipes, resurfacing of the roads specified, and the reconstruction of the curbs. My colleagues' roles were as follows. Ramsey acted as Earthworks manager. Mark acted on behalf of material procurement. And Ben assumed the role of equipment manager. In order to minimize the equipment cost, the ideal duration of the project has been decided to be 28 days. This includes one week of site mobilization. The project will be completed in seven phases. These phases will be discussed in detail by Ben Liu. The first five phases are for earthworks as well as the water main installation. Phases six and seven cover road resurfacing and curb reconstruction. The total cost for our project is approximately $1,263,000. Associated risks have been identified. These include, but are not limited to, delays caused by equipment inefficiencies and malfunctions, as well as municipal regulations due to factors such as equipment queuing on the roads, and noise complaints from habitants in the surrounding areas. My colleagues will now explain their roles in depth. We will start with Ramzi. Hello, my name is Ramzi Farah and I was in charge of earthwork analysis for the site. The earthwork analysis was completed on AutoCAD Civil 3D. To do this, the existing contour map was used to create a surface which was then superimposed on the GR1 drawing and another surface was created from the proposed elevations given. Once the two surfaces were created, a third tin volume surface was created using that data to find the amount of cut and fill needed on the entire site. The final analysis can be found in Appendix A. Once the analysis was completed, the location for the site office was chosen. This location was based on the areas of least cut and fill. Also, the bottom left location allowed for easy access in and out of the site. I will now pass this on to Mark who will commence with the roadwork section. Hi, my name is Mark Bohaira Elias and I will be discussing material procurement. So uh, the first step to this would be to calculate the asphalt volume since the co concrete volume is already given. Um, first we would have to estimate the required paved area from the AutoCAD drawing. It came to 1,274 square meters roughly. Um, <clears throat> uh, after that we'll have to determine the thickness of asphalt um, as specified in the general notes roads column uh, clause 11. Uh, it specifies an, a total 90 millimeter asphalt thickness. Uh, one assumption that goes into this is that the 97% uh, standard proctor density compaction will not affect the total required volume. Uh, so we multiply uh, the 90 millimeter thickness by the required paved area to get our asphalt volume. Um, now that we have both volumes, uh, the next step would be to find the productivity of the concrete paver and asphalt paver uh, in order to determine paving costs. Uh, <clears throat> after having found the productivity cost, uh, we will analyze uh, two alternatives, one of them being uh, renting a close-by chondrain plant and the other one being the ready mix cost. So in order to analyze the chondrain plants we would have to um, uh, first of all uh, uh, sum up the total material cost since we have the volume of asphalt and the volume of concrete we can break them down to their respective components and determine the material cost. Uh, after that uh, we add the paving cost and the rental cost of the plants and it comes down to roughly eighty five thousand uh, dollars the ready mix cost um, <coughs> is uh, is a fixed cost for uh, concrete mix and asphalt mix uh, all we have to do is multiply uh, the concrete mix cost by the concrete volume and the asphalt mix cost by the asphalt volume and we get a hundred roughly hundred sixty five thousand dollars which is twice the cost of using the chondrain plant. Therefore the most economical solution would be to use the would be to rent the chondrain plant. 
Um, that pretty much sums it up for this section. Uh, I'll move it on to Ben to discuss uh, equipment coordination. Hi, my name is Ben Liu. I'm in charge of approximating equipment productivity as well as cost for the entire project. And uh, I'm in charge of coordinating the equipments on site. In calculating the productive equi of equipments, uh, I use data provided on the list of equipments as well as the earthwork information uh, calculated by my colleague Ramzi Farah. Uh, where there's insufficient data on equipments, we made assumption such that uh, the equipment is a standard capacity equipment that's fitting for our site. Um, Based on the productivity of equipments and the total productivity required for the entire project, we were able to calculate cost of each individual uh, equipment. And uh, for equipment that we had to purchase, we used the method of sum of years depreciation to calculate the entire cost of the equipment over the span of the project. And based on the cost and productivity of the equipment, we were able to choose the lowest costing equipments for our entire project and we're able to divide the project into five different phases. Uh, phase one we will be cutting uh, the entire site excluding the contaminated blocks 169, 170 and 171. In this phase we'll be using one scraper B, three wheel order A and nine transport trucks. Uh, the phase will be complete in three days. Phase 2 will be cutting the contaminated area and excavating the trench and the road simultaneously since these two activities don't interfere with each other. In this phase we'll be using one scraper B, four wheel order A, 13 transport trucks and two excavators and this, feat, uh, this phase will be complete in four days. In phase 3 we'll be completing the backfill of our entire site and in this phase we'll only be needing wheel the A and transport trucks and the number of equipments will be 4 and 10 uh, respectively. This phase will be completed in 10 days. In phase 4 we'll be doing the compaction of the trenches for water main as well as the base of the road. Uh, only one vibratory compactor is needed and the job will be completed in one day. In phase 5 we'll be doing the final grading and in this phase, only one grade is needed to complete the job in one day. I will now hand over, and now I will hand over to my colleague Mark to make a final statement about our project. Hi. Uh, hopefully, all the elaborations, explanations throughout this segment help clarify the various aspects of our project. Uh, we thank you for watching, and on the behalf of myself and the team, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year.